Welcome to Listen Wise News Bites, where you can hear stories from the news that are specially selected for young listeners. Listen Wise is an award winning online listening skill building resource used by teachers. We have a curated collection of more than 2,000 podcasts from sources such as NPR and other producers of high quality audio storytelling. In this episode, we share two stories from the news and pose some questions about them. Feel free to pause and think about them in between or listen all the way through. At the end, you'll hear a weird news story about how alligators can help you keep your social distance. First, a story about doctors and nurses needing protective gear while caring for patients sick with COVID-19. How severe is the shortage of protective gear facing healthcare workers? And what, if anything, is being done about it? Doctors and nurses across this country report a lack of basic equipment, most notably proper masks. NPR's Allison Aubrey has been speaking with some of those in hospitals, and she's on the line. Allison, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so the Trump administration says that more masks are being sent to the hardest hit areas like New York City and Washington State. They say production is ramping up. That sounds good. But are people seeing the difference in hospitals? Well, among the people I've spoken to, not yet. I spoke to one doctor, Shuhan He. He's an ER doc at Mass General. That's in Boston. And he says what he is seeing and hearing from others around the country is that there are not decent supplies of protective equipment. This includes masks, gowns, gloves. And given how contagious this virus is, healthcare workers cannot work safely without these protections. He told me that when he goes to work today, he does not know if he'll have the protection he needs. I'm staring at a N95 that I had for multiple shifts and to keep washing it over and over again. And so even though there may be PPE coming in the future, I'm concerned about the here and now. And frankly, it's a life or death situation for me, right? Okay, he says personal protective equipment. There may be personal protective equipment coming in the future, but he's he's referring to that N95 mask. That's the gold standard. That's what there's a shortage of. Is he having to wear the same mask over and over again, which is not the way they're supposed to be used? That's right. That's exactly what he's saying. This is not how it's supposed to work under normal circumstances. This could be considered a breach of protocol. So he has formed a group with other doctors and people in medicine who are on the front lines here in this pandemic. It's called Get Us PPE for Personal Protective Equipment. They are calling on the Trump administration to boost supplies. I also spoke to the president of the American Medical Association, Patrice Harris. She's calling on the Trump administration to activate the Defense Production Act, to mobilize business community, to manufacture more equipment. She says there is no question that demand is greater than supply at this moment. She says it's not just masks. It's also ventilators, testing supplies. She says this is urgent. It's one thing to to talk about doing the right thing, but the metric at the AMA is results. And when we see enough equipment and tests and ventilators actually on the ground, that's when uh, we will say, okay. But until then, we will uh, continue to raise the alarm. So she's saying, you know, enough, enough with the promises. Let's see action. I'll say yesterday, Attorney General Barr said the Justice Department will investigate cases of hoarding, of price gouging, of scarce medical equipment. Although that just underlines that there really is a shortage here. Allison Aubrey, while I have you, I want to ask about another bit of news, a new reported symptom of COVID-19, a new way that people might be able to tell if they actually have this virus or not. What is it? The loss of smell or taste. That sounds kind of odd, right? Wow. Uh, Yeah. A leading group of ear, nose, and throat doctors says a lack of smell or taste should be added to the list of symptoms to screen for COVID-19. This group says loss of smell has been seen in patients that test positive for the virus. They point to anecdotal evidence from China and Europe. I spoke to one doctor in New Jersey who says in some cases, this loss of smell or taste is the only symptom. Hmm. In other cases, it comes with some of the key symptoms of COVID-19, including fever, dry cough, shortness of breath. These ear, nose, and throat docs say people who suddenly lose their sense of smell or taste may warrant testing and self-isolation. Allison, thanks for the insights.
That story from NPR first aired in March, but the problem of not having enough protective gear for doctors and nurses is ongoing. And it's pretty scary to think medical workers don't have everything they need to stay safe and take care of people in the hospital. What are some ideas you have for how to get healthcare workers the protective gear they need? The next story is about what happens at a zoo when no one can come and visit the animals. Most cultural institutions are closed to the public these days. Performers and employees have gone home. But zoos across the country have a vital job which cannot be done remotely, the care and feeding of the animals. Jeff London checked in with the Cincinnati Zoo. Hey, Fee! You want some lettuce? Jenna Wingate loves her job. She feeds Fiona, the zoo's baby hippo, who's become an internet star. Fiona was born premature three years ago, and Wingate has been looking after her since she was two hours old. She was born right around 3 a.m., and I came into work at 5 a.m. that day, and my coworker was like, all right, do you want to switch, take turns spooning her? Because we were literally keeping her warm with our own body heat and blankets and towels and everything. And I was like, absolutely. But it was terrifying. Fiona beat the odds and has become one of the favorite animals for visitors to the Cincinnati Zoo. But there are no visitors there right now. Just the 100 zookeepers, vets, and support staff who look after 500 species and thousands of individual animals. Carrie Ann Bowlerjack is in the interpretive department and says the zoo is working to keep its staff safe. We're cutting off non-essential staff currently and working in smaller groups to kind of limit exposure between staff all across the zoo and our animals. Thane Maynard, the Cincinnati Zoo's director, says that the essential staff really wants to be there. Zookeepers certainly are in the field they're in because they dearly love animals and care for them through thick and thin. Um, And that is a very emotional thing at times. I just celebrated my five-year zooversary here. Carrie Ann Bowlerjack again. One of the animals she takes care of is Rico, a prehensile-tailed Brazilian porcupine. Hey, Rico. You ready to wake up, buddy? I brought you some snacks. Rico might be the perfect animal metaphor for social distancing, but Bowlerjack says she's never been stuck by Rico's quills, and she loves to feed him. He's got these really long, sharp teeth that he uses to crunch all sorts of different things. He really likes the dried apricots. They're kind of sticky, so he kind of uh, makes a smacking sound when he eats those. Everybody loves to watch him eat. Like Fiona, Rico has showed up in videos online. In fact, 700,000 new viewers have turned into the zoo's social media feed since the coronavirus hit. Jenna Wingate. It's been really cool doing these live home safaris and seeing the support and how happy we're making people by doing them. But the zookeepers miss the springtime crowd, says Carrie Ann Bowlerjack. I've never seen it so quiet and so empty. It's really important for us to kind of keep our morale and our mood up. For the animals, though, it's not so bad, says Jenna Wingate. We would be normally going into a really busy time with all sorts of events and everything, so It's nice for us in one way. We can kind of relax a little bit and focus 110% on the animals. Fiona overall, she's doing great. She's living her regular life and and getting tons of attention from us. So so she's doing really well. And she adds, I'm definitely very lucky to still get to come to work. I'm needed. It feels good to be needed. (laughs) Hey, Fee. Good job. I'm so happy to hear Fiona, the baby hippo, is doing so well in this pandemic. I think it would be fun to take care of the gorillas. They're so interesting to watch because they often act just like humans do. If you were a zoo worker, which animal might you like to take care of and why? And now it's time for some weird news. What do alligators and social distancing have to do with each other? Listen to find out. Good morning, I'm Noelle King. We know we're supposed to stay at least six feet apart from each other to prevent the spread of COVID-19, but it can be hard to visualize how far six feet is exactly. We've been told the length of a car, a large couch, a dining room table. Leon County, Florida came up with its own device. The county advised residents on social media to keep at least one large alligator length apart from one another. Florida will be Florida. 
thanks to our partner NPR and to Scott Holmes for our theme music. That's it for the Listen Wise News Bites podcast this week. For more stories from the news selected for young listeners, go to www.listenwise.com and sign up for free. And subscribe to this podcast for our weekly shows. Happy listening.